That's very direct, James, and I'm okay with that, Launders. We're here with Windstrike and Avangar, and it is the rematch. The rematch of the winner's game in the group stage. Uh, I personally feel like Avangar have just gotten better over time throughout this event. Yesterday's showing was obviously fantastic, and seeing as Spirit were no slouches today, you know, maybe that win really does go to prove Avangar are what we expected, the top favored team at the CIS Minor. It would make sense then for them to win this BO3, and as they said on the desk, take that $30,000 prize, and more importantly, the top seed at IEM Katowice 2019. I am looking forward to it. Avangar looks so good and looks so good on Dust too. Let's see if they can continue their performance from yesterday versus Spirit. They look so damn insane on this map and I feel like every team can take a page out of their book when it comes to being more consistent on this map. So now Windstrike have uh, taken the T side moving out to long. Five armored players on the CT side, three up on the A site. This is where a lot of their really cool setups were. This will be a bit of a, an anomaly in that they don't have the appropriate guns or equipment, but they've got the long lines of sight. Here's just a jockeying up position. Is there are enough players from Avangard that they can now span out into a cat setup, and they're just waiting to see if Windstrike are eventually going to get up long. This is a team that uh, really likes long. A lot. A lot. <laughs> And they're actually quite good at taking it. Let's see if uh, Avangar can teach Gambit a thing or two about how to hold. Right, exactly that. Would be more of a defense. Oh, nice tap there. Oh, excuse me, no. Well, it was a ruse. It looked like Kickert just denied it entirely, but it was actually Krizen coming in with some support. So good team play here from Avangar, sharing the kills evenly so far. Norbert trying to make this cat flank successful, has everything to do now. 1v4 gets a headshot. Good way to kick it off. The 30 seconds means his feet will be forced into the open, and that's what Avangar want. They want to trap him here on elbow. But he's actually getting even one step closer. It's not that it's going to make a difference. Krizen with the final kill, and Avangar win pistol one. Norbert was particularly crafty on the CT side uh, when they played, and we, you know, we had a lot to say about how lackluster their T side was and how they struggled, but still managed rounds. Well, he did a pretty good job on the A side, and we'll see more of that in the second half. But for now, it's going to be an eco round here for Windstrike. They aren't going to be buying up. They didn't get the bomb plant, which sometimes can supplant enough money that you can get an early buyout. But in this situation, Avangar realizes it's probably not going to be a buy. They have an AUG to kind of support all the SMGs that'll hopefully be funneling all the kills into them. Maybe follow up frags. Nice damage there from Fitch off the MP5. A couple of pistol kills at the end, one back for Quick, and that's something for Windstrike, but barely anything at all. However, it's a technicality, Mohan. Let's get into the gun rounds. I see Kalashnikovs. Yeah, into the next rifle, I think. We'll see. What do we have now? One player who needed to upgrade. Krizen, who is just going to potentially grab the MP9 again, so they got a couple of SMGs. We've seen Jame in this situation uh, decide to, well, play it play the CT round out, but play it quite safe so that if his teammates die, that they don't lose the op, they can recycle it here. He is going to be taking the first frag. Really nice spawn for him to go for that duel. Spots ahead of a player in pit, drop a smoke to defend for himself, but he's going to need some support, Connor. Yeah, most certainly so. At least it's coming in from Catwalk. You see these flashbangs popping over, so that's meant to be his evacuation plan, and he's most certainly evacuated. Corpse thrown to the ground by Vic. Good headshot. One of my favorite players of Windstrike. He really stood out yesterday in their performance versus Gambit. He was amazing, for sure. And again, Windstrike. Back to basics. Fitch picking up the AWP. Not quite as proficient with it. But has certainly used it a few rounds. Even at this tournament. Here we go. The cross smokes are out. Fitch tries to peer over top of the smoke. Doesn't realize how close the targets are quite yet, but drops them all top. Yep, and Kicker helps him out with that closer of kills. Krizen ready to fly through smoke at a moment's notice, just being told when the green light's there, and it doesn't seem to be yet. Fitch is up, denies bomb. That's a real problem for Windstrike now. The world that it finds himself alone, pinned in behind the taxi. So, one kill is all he'll get in the end. First gun rounds, avant-garde, just like the pistol in conversion. And we see a round where Jame wasn't necessary to stay alive, which was not something that we saw yesterday. He was very important, pivotal, especially on the A defense, but his teammates seemed very capable. 
and uh, are ready to be able to hold in the in the circumstance that he dies. He t he tried to make kind of a a hail mary rotate when he jumped out from car and and attempted to get back into CG spawn. That was a bit of a risk. Whoa. What? Okay. It's like everyone just gets up and leaves. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, they, there's a lot of there's so much cool stuff to talk about with Avangar CD side, and I'm just waiting to see the rifle rounds to show us with uh, the way that Jame gets set up and the way that his team supports them, and also how they defend against cat plays. Such cool setups for sure, world class setups if you ask me. Win strike, not much money here. Just going to be pistoling up. I think we had a small tack pause called to talk about things there that can be extended into this round if they want to delay. The clock is on their side, the CTs will most likely be somewhat passive. We do have a peek into lower B. Kicker deals with the threat, and Boomich at top mid, and there are three players in the offense in the lower tunnels. We've now fanned out a little bit. Nice. Jam already getting his impact off the op, denying any footing for wind strike. That's a long range deagle at the top of mid. Not going to be fully accurate. Jane no. will have a better chance of winning. The wall bang headshot to close up the round. Avangar up to 4 0. Another rifle round. Let's see what happens. The spawns are there. They can pick either side of the map right now. And World Edit has his AWP. Just so curious how uh, Windstriker are going to set the tone. The other thing that they had that was interesting about their T sub was a really good cat execute. Now, Fix mixing his way over to long, but four players have moved over to B. They're not spotting mid, they're open to a lower push, even though there isn't one. Initial malt off a of rum buster to deny any kind of B rush. We are in CIS, so always we gotta be concerned about that. Take note, of course, before this big hit comes in, or excuse me, we'll get back to that, because they're not waiting at all. Buster comes in from the corner. James on door. Quick rotate just back behind him and Fitch. He's trying to play around here with the flashbangs, waiting for the fire to fade. Nobody's gone for the cross, but as the smoke comes in, Jame nearly knocks one off. Fitch goes over top with World Edit trading one kill. They've only seen two. One straggler out at mid. Kvik can make the difference. Minute up on the clock, too. Can he take the long way around? Drop off into cat if he wants to. Even assist the bomb and going back. Boomich might have seen that boost. Oh, that smoke could be deceptive at the same time. Yep, Molotov's gonna force his feet. Still underneath the windowsill, though. That's a good spot to be. But Avangar crucially kill that flank behind them. Ooh, look at this. The triple rotation. Because, of course, the person they killed behind would have called that all three were mid. So just a complete redirection. Look how World Edit's bamboozled. Entirely caught off guard. Boomich is just gonna hide behind the box. That's a very little spot for him to be cowering in, but they haven't found him at all. Krizen's on top of the bomb and he pops right up. Kicker can't land the bullet and Boomich, his mag goes dry just in time for Avangar to defuse. Mm. You gotta appreciate that with the amount of time it took for them to make that full on rotate, even though it was based off the information that they had deceptively given to Windstrike, that they, that uh, Boomich decided to just kind of tuck it and and try to delay and and almost if he had not had been so labored on that on that first kill right. could have potentially put together the second one if he had a few more bullets in the mag didn't take any damage and then could have potentially denied the bomb plant or bomb defuse or just taking him taking him out before the oh, kill oh, came oh. world edit catching jame on the jump back Hitting him twice through that door. Now, what I wanted to bring up last round plays perfectly into here. Of the two times we've seen these teams play on Dust2, this is the first time World Edit has actually killed Jame with an AWP. On their first matchup in the 16-5 to Avangar's favor, it was 7-0 in AWP duels for Jame. That was an insane lurk. Abusing their own poofy smoke. Things get a bit awkward now as the last player alive at A is Krizen. Yeah, and he's already been pinched upon. Norbert is going to blindside him. Never expected the player to be so hot on his heels. Buster's been found as well. He is doomed beneath the feet of Waylander. Windstrike straight away on the board. A well-earned round. The, the opening off duel was tough, but w World Edit, as you mentioned, hit him twice. And so took Jame out. And then 
Once they knew the op was down, immediately tried to abuse that, push that advantage further through the poofy smoke on the mid B split and got around Fitch. Norbert pulled off a fantastic lurk and pulled around back for wind strike. Another pretty strong buy for both teams. Attack pause called from Avangar. They attempt to ice the kicker. In fact, now that I take a deeper look at the stats, of, of all of the 21 rounds they played last time on Dust 2, World Edit only had one op kill. You know, that's a huge missing factor and obviously made possible by the fact that Jame outclassed him. So we'll now have three snipers on the field with Buster and Jame both on an op. So how do Avangar, how do Windstrike actually keep it safe? It's a four man long defense. Something we didn't see from Gambit. First kill goes the way of Windstrike. And even though it's traded back because they lost Pick Control, they no longer feel safe standing out in the open and fighting. Retreating fully into Catwalk. They'll take control of that instead. I like that they're still playing active. You know, they're making the most of the fact they've lost long. But look at this. Buster has is the B player, but they feel so confident that they've that they know Windstrike have oftentimes gone long and not had a single lurker on the round that now that they've cleared out top mid with their cat players, can focus all of their attention on dealing with A. Windstrike know none of this. The fog of war is too great for them. They're stuck here to watch the flank, have time tick down, hope that Avangar make a mistake that they certainly won't, and get pushed into a long exec that Avangar will be happy to see. Fitch burned out of position. He's gonna take a safer spot, or so he tries to. A lot of bodies coming up that ramp, and Krizen with a double kill. James dodging bullets as he retreats into the catwalk. And is he gonna go all the way towards long? It seems as so. Because they've done so much work on the bomb site now, World that it couldn't sit back as an anchor. He had to come help with Waylander. And that opens this up huge for the flank. James is ready. Oh, no, World did it. He's holding this. Yeah, James goes down. Buster's up, 1v2. Optimistic jump shot. And immediately falls away. He knows he's been countered out by the smokes and that up is invaluable. He'll save it as Windstrike take a second round. Man, I want to say the most important thing there for Windstrike was that Molotov that they, they placed on the site. It was in, it pushed Fitch into an awkward position. There were, no, there were not two spots at elbow for him and his friend to stand in. And so he decided to push back and because he was kind of in flux between these two spots, felt uncomfortable, missed his shot, and allowed Windstrike to take position on the A site. And now the bomb was planted on, on single box, so Buster didn't have an op, might have gone for that. If he got that first kill, probably would have been a hard round for World Edit to win. And if he was rotating from any other spot, you know, we could have seen a 1v2 come to fruition for Avangar, but instead Windstrike get the two in a row and push Avangar into a save, looking a whole lot better we saw from their last map on Dust2. Default out for Windstrike. And James once again has the AWP on the Eco because Buster had held on to it for him. We've seen what he can do in these rounds. Or especially where he doesn't have to worry about his teammates at all. He can just do absolutely anything he does, please. There is a man coming towards him. That's quick indoors. On long, Norbert, clearing Fitch out of the corner mid. That's big. It's going to put some things in question. Avangar not sure if there's a mid split coming their direction, but Avangar have also moved that op away from long. Looks like now. Makes it easier to save. Sure. Mid gets cleared out. They don't know what's going to happen. Avangar have a bad read on this. They think it's going to be a B hit delayed, but it's not. Norbert has done its job, and World Edit takes James out of the round. Retrieving the op will be easy. It'll be much more difficult for Windstrike to try to nullify it and just completely take it out, force a rebuy. That might not be possible for Avangar next round. But they'll be happy to win the round safely. Here they have the long split going on and no targets at A. Right. Still just going to go through the motions here with the utility usage. And in fact, Buster gets one. Just confirming, of course, to Windstrike as to what is going on. 
It's a strong start for them in a map they struggled strongly with in this team's previous meetup. I was surprised to see they even let it through. But right. uh, now that it's through, we can see that they've maybe had a talk about what happened. I mean, they were fairly jovial about their win just because I guess it was a win. Uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, they're just happy that uh, they made it happen. But they probably also had a very serious conversation about what they could change and adjust about their dust too to improve it. And maybe leave it in as kind of a surprise for Avangard to be like, oh, well, maybe they're, they're suddenly more confident for some reason. Definitely some valuable game tape of a match that went to overtime. So lots of rounds played. So Buster recycles this up. We'll drop it over to James. Everybody rebuys up and Avangar will try one more time. Three in a row for Windstrike. Looking solid on T side. Much better game than I anticipated, to be honest. And it looked like it was about to slip away from them. So what do they have now in store for us? Waylander. Oh, looks to take a pick potentially at long off of their spawn. And we'll soon find out if it's going to be one in response. James actually a little bit far back. And the flash to assist, assist in Krizen crossing to pit. This is going to be a new threat for Windstrike. Though, Krizen, what's he want to do? Last time they forfeited it completely, they had troubles. One of their other alternative setups was to have him at car and have Jame on the ramp with a smoke in hand so that he could focus on Cat and not have to worry about his teammate or his own life when long control gets taken. When strike trade and go up Cat. And have options covered. They've even got a player in lower as insurance. Oof. It's a big one. That makes this a single pronged assault. And it's not as though they get any footing for it either. They're still waiting with the smoke and the Molotov down. Flashbang's gonna call the attention. James sees Boomich fall downwards. And comes back in for a third kill of the round, nearly nailing a fourth. But Norbert creates a bit of space here. A lot of space. Oh my god. They it's actually just rotators. One coming through the smoke. The spray isn't good enough, and that leaves World Edit now in a 1v3. Right. He knows Fitch is down there towards CT spawn. May anticipate players from long. The longer he takes, the closer and closer Avangar get. They certainly have him outnumbered. He's lost half of his health, distracted by the hop up, and he misses two chances at cutting down the numbers. So Avangar will win this round and keep two ops for the next. Could have been a 2v2 with World Edit Alive and his teammate at car to defend against Long. That would have been a whole hell of a lot harder for Avangar to win. But even in that 1v3, as you mentioned, two shots missed. Yep. Got to hit those. Props to Norbert, though. Really definitely brought this one back, seeing after James completely dispatched of the initial push. Made it very difficult for Windstrike to find footing on the bomb site itself. Absolutely. That's got to be frustrating for Norbert, doing all that work, and then a player comes through the smoke. Just as you're staring at it, Fitch, as we saw in his POV, wasn't even ready. Still gets the better of him. Waylanger here just checking to make sure nobody goes into lower. Fitch is being quite aggro with how he's controlling long. We didn't see so much of this the last time. Oh, if quick just clicked. <laughs> Do it. Why would he? He was that one single long player in the previous round that never got a chance to make impact on the bomb site. Avangar fully fishing for this B hit, but it's it's just different combinations of ways to go A and pressure on Jame once again. Same pieces of utility being thrown out here from Windstrike. We'll see how much of a difference Quick can make if he doesn't die before the hit comes in. Remember, one of the key missing pieces in the previous round. They jump down, and Jame, well, he hits the shot onto Boomich, but doesn't get the kill. So he'll make sure he keeps himself alive by falling back. Bomb most certainly planted for Cat. Avangar still yet to rotate. And Quick kind of does his job, but here he pivots. And now they have a Cat plant set up, and he didn't even have to push long. Perfect. Right. Very quick swap up into a different look completely here. But Boomich ready to section off the CT push. It's Kicker and Krizen now with their back turn because pressure was pushed out through mid. Down goes Boomich, thanks to Fitch. Waylander and World that it's still up, one of which 
is towards Cat and Waylander here on the boxes. That blindsides Chris and he never sees it coming and the bomb's so far gone now that Jame really has no chance. Damn, he dies too. Wow, solid round from Windstrike. That was uh that was extremely difficult to deal with. And Avangar almost did. I thought that they were, you know, sorting things out. It felt like they were actually gonna win. Buster rotating in and killing Vic at top mid when he should have been the last to die in the post plant because he didn't anticipate them there to be two ops. But still, all the other after plant spots were good. And Windstrike appeared to be more dynamic than they let off. This is uh, really cool stuff. Oh, that's a big frag. Gotcha. It is just the anti-eco. Right. That kill worth its weight in gold if this was a gun round. Goes to show you as well what a difference it was in the previous round when Quick doesn't die in the doors. Saw the way he went back to top mid, sectioned off a player on the rotate too. Played an instrumental piece that 10th round's puzzle. And we were kind of focused on the standoff between uh, Krizen and Kvik, but we didn't see what Jame did where he had to fall off the long and hold for control for the retake. You know, the last round, he just had so many shots that he was able to take off. Right. So the flashes must have been improved as well to push him off. And he also didn't immediately kill the player who dropped down towards CT, you know. That was something that definitely helped him in the previous round just prior. Finding an empty A site yet again. Wind strike. Thinking this one's too easy. But Krizen is nearby. Looking to dish out some damage. Well, this match is the winner's winners finals match or we're no moving on to the winners finals match. Right, this is the upper bracket final. Upper bracket of finals, yes. CIS minor playoff for IEM Katowice 2019. <laughs> right. So, yeah, the uh, Avangar secure their spot, or whoever wins this series actually secures their spot. If you lose, you still have a chance. Yeah, of course. And the loser of that match will still get to go into a third place decider tournament yep. for an extra spot. At this point, these two teams plus Spirit all still have chances at the major, regardless of the outcome of this best of three. Whether that be here for the CIS minor, playing regional teams only, or as we keep alluding to, playing the play-in. Yeah, and the circumstances are still very serious because although that will be a third place desired tournament, it's not going to be region specific. No, exactly. It's going to be much harder. Right, of course. It's going to be the teams that nearly made it from every region, so made it almost all the way through their own respective minors, and now have to go up against each other. So. For these teams, they're looking for a win here. They're looking for a place in the finals of this minor, and anything else is going to be completely stressful, nerve-wracking, you name it. Push up from Catwalk, bomb drop, Fitch and Krizen ready to receive this. Long A setup gets aggressive, but who else than Norbert to bring it back again? Just like last time, when he throws a round that looks convincing into question, it begins with him. World Edit then follows right up with another kill. Norbert out from doors already, but James heard his footsteps. James knows. Oh, he knows. Oh, wow, he just goes for it. Even a bit early, I was wondering if he was going to hit that wall bang, not do the damage, and get traded out, but uh, it becomes a very pivotable, pivot, pivotable, pivotal, pivotal kill. Speaking of pivots, World Edit just turned back around to watch Long. He had an inkling as to Buster being mid, and he'd be right in assuming so. But he has no idea that Buster's really this close. They're just chilling. World Edit would love for James to just creep into that angle. So we know A is safe. Oh, and was quite safe about the way he was clearing angles and just barely saw the barrel of Buster's AUG. But Buster had the drop on him. Got the kill and took the round. Avangar 7 to 5 as we move into the final moments of the first half. Nice kill there versus Kicker. Again, that's a round that would have fallen flat on its face if it wasn't once more for Norbert. One of the newcomers to this. Yeah, team. he's been an X Factor. Yep. And he's not one of the names that, you know, is necessarily right on the radar the moment you look at this lineup. No, it looks like a Leet Speak generated name. Yeah. <laughs>
What if he insisted on being called N0RB3R7? We're just mispronouncing it. You know, because apparently uh, a boom BL4 is boomage. Boomage. So I never know what Windstrike's up to. Unless they approach us at land. Yeah. And tell us. I feel no personal responsibility to figure that out. Two players in pit here for Avangar. They've done this bait setup before. Let's see if it gets called out. Molotov definitely keeps them committed. Flash comes down from Long and Krizen. Comes way too high up from Pit and Fitch. <laughs> Fitch again in a patient trigger discipline type position. Oh my goodness, just wants to stay directly behind him. He's getting flashbacks to yesterday, but there is nobody else here for Windstrike. It is just Quick alone. And I feel like once James feels pressure, maybe that's when he pulls the trigger, but no, he does it even sooner. This could prevent Windstrike from coming out Cat, but no, they'll go. Heading right into the sniper, dropping him instantaneously. Kicker emerges from CT spawn and he's gonna try to tap away at the players and elbow. He casts a crawl and he gets back to safety. Bomb, one step closer to the site, but barely alive on Waylander, four HP. And he's not the only man up with low health. Look at Avangar, barely standing between Buster and Kicker, but at least they're close to the bomb site. A smoke to block off Cat means Buster He's gonna have to find Waylander on his own. Oh, and no, what in God's name? The bomb, is it on the opposite side? Yeah, the smoke is down. Ah, oh, it's not great, however. Boomich has an angle on the outside of it. Buster's gonna have to stick that soon. First off shot goes off, a player crosses, the trade isn't in. The nade is decent, but Boomich is better. A little bit of health lost, but he wins the 1v1. They close the round out, and it's off of another solid cat play. Yep. Once more, even without quick on long. We've seen that unfold in a completely different direction, but they managed to get past Jame again. Pumich looked like he was talking about a thousand miles per minute. <laughs> Young in-game leader with a lot of fragging responsibility too. There it is, back to basics. But it is four players here with pistols, ready to frag. An AK is dropped right in the pit, and oh. a couple have gone down. In fact, it's a very favorable for Avangar. Considering they came into this round with barely anything at all, that's one of those moments win strike right off their opponents. They go for the fast clash, and it could very well cost them. Now, they could plant for Catwalk with zero contention from Avangar. Buster's got the health, but he doesn't have armor. Both of them will basically get melted upon taking a first bullet. And that's a shot missed from World Edit. It's now known, however. That there could be a long play. Oh, oh. oh man, but that's just that one's just gifted to Buster. And Waylander's on such little health. But that's a hell of a shot downrange. Unfortunately for him, doesn't expect Avantgarde to be so close. So a crucial error from Windstrike in this here 14th round. Avangar gonna get another round to the lead. And Launders, what do you think of that? Fast clash out long, right through smokes with flashbangs and only pistols on the other side to stop them. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of pistols. They had half armor at the very minimum, but uh, for Windstrike, they're looking at it as like, okay, we love going long, plus it's an anti-eco. Should be pretty simple. Now the, the AK falling into pit, that specific trade not going their way, was, I think, the deal breaker, where now suddenly Avangar have long control with pit control, with better guns, and Windstrike are a bit too confused to be able to handle it. So, I don't know. And going in, going long on Antico's, sound. Having rounds like that fall into place, it's sometimes that can happen. But with that, Avangar maintain a lead. Could have been tied up. And Windstrike here are now on the back foot. Trading guns around as they figure out what to buy. World Edit, as we can see, is only going to be scouting. Back and forth affair these last four rounds. The Terrace could very well extend that to a fifth. Enough of a buy to make something happen, but Jame immediately catching w w Waylander. Now versus Long Control. This is kind of the situation that we've seen him be in many times. He has a smoke for himself. We haven't seen that setup that he they, they used once. He takes a bit of damage, but he'll stay alive. Sometimes he'll drop a smoke on the site, stand up over top of it and try to fire that way. 
but here they're playing it a lot more differently. Now that I think about it, I haven't seen him in that position once this half. Yeah. So really changing up this defense slightly on the A site. That's a CT smoke currently here towards the cross. Builds a little bit of cover for Krizen, and they're just gonna try to cross that. They have the deep CT smoke, I think it is. So they wanted to fight. Yeah, they wanted to fight within that. They just, I guess, didn't realize how many CTs were actually pushed up on the ramp. Hot damn, hell of a shutdown here in the final round of the half. 9-6 the advantage for Avon Gar as they'll swap to the offense. Can Windstrike hold them back? We'll find out in a bit. We'll see you guys soon for the second half of map one. A much closer affair already here to the favor of Windstrike, but Avangar have that three round lead. And it was on the T side that we watched them dismantle Windstrike Launders. So there's no saying whether or not this will continue to be close or whether Windstrike get decimated, folks. It's so weird because by the way the, the half went, it felt like Windstrike looked better than Avangar, but still Avangar managed to put together nine rounds. A huge part of that is obviously because they got the early 5-0 start. So, you know, we look at this game, I think Windstrike feel a lot more confident. They look good for sure. Unfortunately for them, didn't get enough rounds to make this half easy without a pistol. But I think there's still hope if you are a Windstrike fan. Avangar here waiting patiently. And we know they kind of draw these T rounds out. But there are a lot of teams that draw these T rounds out for no reason. Avangar almost always do it because they carefully and meticulously know how to work map control into round wins. They grind them out, they use all their players really well, and we'll certainly see some of that here and now. A strange smoke out, man. I think that must have been a missed one. It doesn't deny vision on the cross, so this isn't going to be too much of a seeker. Vic will be the first, I was going to say, line of defense, but maybe just target as he gets gushed instantly and has to fall back to long. Bomb will most certainly get planted. This is probably not a duel you want to take. This player at mid-Krizen is who's denying all the rotates. Right, that's a big burden on his shoulders. So shall he stand tall? <laughs> Absolutely. Towers over Norbert and Waylander here. That's going to draw the two CTs back from long. They're going to couple with Boomich, who's already dead. And these headshots are on point. <laughs> Those glocks are working better than they've ever worked. Right. Must have been a buff in between the halves because Avon Gar just tore through them 
on this pistol. Truly nasty stuff. And uh, yeah, a lot of that just comes down to Chrism's ability to hold if he can go one for one. If he doesn't get a kill, it's a much different round. 5v4 when they lose cat control, that's maybe an easy retake for Windstrike. So good on him for delivering the goods. 10 to 6 now as Avangar move into another anti eco. And again, two pistols in a game. I mean, that can be enough to really push it over the edge. They have now not only secured their lead, a decent first half, but move into that dominant kind of overshadowing scoreline in the double digits. Leaving Windstrike in the dust a little bit, but uh, Windstrike's goal more so than anything this round is just to get a little bit of damage if he can find it. Well, there's some right there. Well, that it really wants that kill. You know, it's a bit of a tease once you get your first dink. Oh, that's the sweatiest spot ever. <laughs> Fitch is in that car. What is this, a match or something? We still get caught, or could add. Had quick gone the other direction, but he's chasing ghosts at this point. No one to be found. Avon Gar. All too easy. Remember what their C their CT side was just decent yesterday. That was win strike, I should say. Avangard's T side is so scary though. It's yeah. just it's so scary. It's just so it's so slow, which is a big thing. That in that in and of itself can be frustrating to call against. Do we want to push this? Are they waiting for us? Are they setting up for an execute and we're not rotated properly? These are all the questions you have, and and a good team is always going to be prepared to capitalize on your overzealousness. Your impatience, your aud aud audaciousness, like these are all things that Avangar prey upon. So it'll be on Windstrike to make the appropriate callouts, to be confident when it's necessary, but to never overextend. Because in all those situations, they'll lose. Full buy out for both teams. The weaker buy is certainly Windstrikes. No head armor on a few people, but they do that so they can have that extra smoke. It's just that they've also only got two Fomuses. <laughs> sweatiest spot of all time. Never seen a kill. I haven't seen a kill in a, in a match from that spot uh, so far on this dust too. So it's cool to see that that car was implemented for a reason. Mid straight away win strike. They'll go for that long setup. Moving back quick already. You've got to be fast because sometimes Avant Garde can just pounce here on the T side of dust too. I love the way they play around with pacing at times. Like you said, either meticulously setting things up and playing proactive in a slower pace, but other times just bombarding bomb sites. This looks to be one of them. Got the smoke low, and that half smoke too. It allows for them to come out and still have decent vision. Molotov's high, but not as high as that flashbang. It does slow things down, certainly. Quick's waiting for a head to present itself, hoping somebody tries to chuck themselves down into the lower tons, but that's not going to happen just yet. Avangar waiting and inching their way forward, slowly but surely. Waylander takes the place of World Edit, both CTs down for the count with zero response in frags. In fact, it is empty-handed for Windstrike until Boomich comes in from long, has another target to take, but can do nothing more. It is 12-6, and Avangar just cut straight through that A site. It's absolutely the not the optimal way to have to deal with cat players by playing the low ground in CT spawn at elevator. On the ramp is normal, but these players that were at the ramp, both of them, I think it was World Edit and Waylander couldn't get a kill at all. So the counter grenades were fine. They actually set up quite well and there wasn't even a molly on default. So there was a there was potential for them to play that a little bit more differently. They could have also implored Goose, but Goose is so committed that they had to be sure it was a cat play and they didn't have much mid presence to do that. Because of their weak buy, they only had a Fama spotting from the left side of mid, and he could only know so much without putting his life at risk. So, Avangar capitalizing on mid control and the misinformation that Windstrike had, or just a lack of information, to allow them to play a really solid, committed A setup. Said they were kind of one foot in, one foot out, and Avangar just gave him the boot. I like those rounds from Avangar, and they've done it versus multiple opponents on multiple different maps where they set up a play based on smokes and utility, and it looks like a full-blown execute, but then it just goes dead silent. You know, Windstriker waiting just for just one person to come around a corner, and there's, there's zero confirmed spottings 
of the tease at all. So is it a fake? Absolutely not. They then transition to the full-blown hit. You know, they're comfortable to let their initial utility fade away. And obviously comfortable in rounds like this. Win strike. they had a lot of upsets with their eco rounds versus Gambit yesterday. I don't anticipate Avangard giving them those sorts of opportunities. Four up at long, and once again, Fitch is just here on the anti-eco. This is standard practice. They don't have to get tricky with it. One time teams give other teams problems from the CT side is when they can half buy and grab scouts. That's when long becomes a little bit more competitive, even if the other team is saving. But this is not one of those situations. Two players low on life, and Norbert goes ahead and takes his own. And B bombsite where there's absolutely no one from Avangar. Sometimes wild things happen. That's how in, that's how in his head they are. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this! <laughs> it just explodes. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even, I didn't even know there was a place that was high enough in the B site to die from falling. How do you even take fall damage in the B site? I don't know. It looked <laughs> like it was outside tunnels, too. Okay. That's a head scratching instance of death. World edit. One parting deke, perhaps? No. He's just going to walk away alive for now. And that's a 13th on Avangar's behalf. It's daunting to have to think about how much money is being made on the rounds like these, you know? These look like kind of just like inter intermediary wastes of time. And it's just like you have to go through because of the economic system. But in these matches, it's really everything to kill two or three players when you have pistols. Yeah, you're not favored to win the round, but you are expected to get something out of it. So, Windstrike are going to call their oh, third pause of the match. And they've got to take this one seriously. They do have an op on Waylander to match up against Shame, who I think, I don't know. Oh, they've got an op on Waylander and World Edit. So it's a very strong buy. This is kind of the makings of what could be a solid round to stop the to stop this win streak from Avangar. It's the kind of purchase you save up for, for the sole purpose of cutting back this kind of substantial lead. You know, you need to change up, not just for a one-off, rather a momentous comeback into this first map. Frag counts in general low for Windstrike, in general high for Avangar across the board. Everybody seems to be contributing. Jame had a, a, a spotty first half and only has 11 kills. I think that that goes to show you that, uh, you know, he's pivotal on A. But he's just as proficient, kind of omnipresent on the T side. Yeah. As he's really good at staying mobile and finding new opportunities when it's it would be hard to see for other players. The cat presence for World Edit, and he, by the skin of his teeth, dodges a nade. Fitch's spam is also just a smidgen off and takes an HE from Cat. So they'll have an idea of what the setup is. You can't really hold Long and Cat at the same time safely. But they've at least got one in pit. And so it's going to be on Avangar to try to decide what is the easier place to grab, because that's all you want to do. You just don't want to head, run head first into the spot that the CTs are putting the most amount of people in. Pit player goes down Boomich. Could be critical here. 59 seconds. And it's and it might come down to simply world edit on the cat as his teammate now joins him. Waylander previously had an angle where he was watching exactly where James stands. But he falls off because of the utility pressure. So now the op duel falls on world edit. Does have support currently from Quick just next to him, but we have a complete and total redirection from Avangar. All five players going to be hitting up long. I think they're going to smoke Cat off and just stop them on their rotates right here. That mo it's a Molotov. There it is. Oh, but they smoke it out, and now they can kind of fight. But they've got the dual smokes. It's going to be a tough shot to hit. 15 seconds up, though. One of these shots could matter. Yep. Only takes the one. It's well-timed and perfectly placed. They're looking to boost over top of this. Buster has the cover of the smoke, so he's fine. Very well done there by Avangar with the utility. The Molotov on the on the catwalk just makes things awkward. Still putting up that wall of smoke prevents anything at all. 
and then they use the actual physical cover to get their bomb plant launders. It is a crush of wind strike. Expensive rounds. Very expensive round. And AUG, they had, well, they had, well, and AUG's not too expensive, but they had two ops. They went all in. They called the pause for this round. That's one of those rounds that has like a lot hinging on it. There's a there's a bit of a build up with the fact that you know they're inching closer and closer to Waylander towards mid. We ask ourselves, will Jame get picked off? And then absolutely not. Right, Mitch. Sorry. sorry, right at the end of the round, everybody groups together. Everybody runs out long. Beautiful set piece of utility. Like that just goes to show the depths of Avant Garde because they're not throwing that at the beginning of rounds either. It's not a fast play. They can they can have these mid round calls that just seem so perfect. And it was Boomich to have all the pressure applied to him. As soon as they identified that they were players aggressive on Cat, you typically don't do that by yourself. So they went ahead and said, hey, we'll trade for long control. And if and there seemed to be someone there, that ends up being a boon for Avangar could just get the kill. And look at this, they're just continuing the dominance. Everybody getting melted from Windstrike. One player left alive in Kvik, and he has a Famas. But does he have any hope? He's got one kill. Maybe a second. Yes, sir. That's the opera down. You know, we talked about the economic damage being a factor, but once we get to the score line like this, it's not enough, not nearly. Windstrike have already improved their previous score on Dust 2 versus Avangar by one round, and now they're gonna need nine more in a row, flawlessly, or else we're heading over to train. First half seemed so long ago at this point where Windstrike got all of the six rounds that they have now. And there is a high potentiality, high percent chance that they just lose straight out as they don't have even an op to play with. Good collection of Fomas. Over towards the B tunnels, Avangar gonna bring that bomb really quickly actually. So no smoke on the cross means they counted it and Norbert just gets ripped apart. Fitch could easily section off this rotate through spawn. That's three of the four Windstrike members coming upwards because Waylander's the sole B defender and as he dodges the flashbang, he takes the bullet to the head. Right after which Boomich dies. I mean, this is a clean sweep from Avangar on their T side. Flawless, not a single CT round has been won. This could be the difference if World Edit continues to disrupt the plant attempt, but no, nothing at all. Two kills and quick flanked. Down he goes as Windstrike, as we said, had a decent first half showing and then disappeared on that CT side. A dominating performance from Avangar, but a second map inbound. We'll see you guys on train after a brief break.